hello again. So, um, okay, I mean, I don't really, um, <clears throat> okay, so what are we doing? Um, Okay, so right, the idea behind this is you know, this video is to put into context um, put me into context, I suppose, or, or where I'm coming from, right? Because Part of the conceit that I have around um, this idea or this approach or, or the sense or this, um, I don't know, the sense that there's like an architecture that underlying everything um, is that it's somehow universal, that I've like figured out software, um, you know, um, Right, like I have this basic idea that that you've got, you know, that that if you take cause and effect and then you um, you combine it with, um, if you want to see me gesticulate, but if you if you've um, you know take cause and effect and you combine it with history and combine it with the idea of functions and and um, you know that that somehow this is gonna like solve all these software problems, um, and y you know, I mean, ideally, I wanna I wanna get to the root cause of everything and like come up with the uh, the, the 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 general relativity of software, like the real mind blowing. Um, uh, you know, central ideas behind it. But, but I'm also, I'm wary of the fact that may, maybe, maybe all that I'm really doing is, you know, that, that, that I'm myopic, that, that I only see things in terms of the, the work that I'm doing, right? And that's why I want to walk through exactly the work that I have done and my career as a software developer. Um, and just just to see whether or not that's the case, you know, or, or at least to lay that out. Okay, this is the software that I've written, um, and and um, you know, and to, to to give to give a context or another perspective or an angle at looking at this idea, right? So, I mean, I still haven't really fleshed out precisely what that what the idea is, but. Um, and I still, I'm not even sure, I, I, I know precisely what it is, but they, they do have a lot to say about it. Um, but yeah, so so the, the way I see my, my career as a, as a developer is sort of um, in three phases, right? Um, how am I gonna do this? So just write in markdown, phases, okay. So phase one was, you know, university, university, university. Okay. So in university, I, um, I'm going to turn this off. Hide. Is that going to work? Okay. So for, you know, at, at university, I, I studied mechanical engineering. Um, and, you know, for my honors project, I had to, you know, I had a friend who was writing a, um, a game engine, ma mainly focused on the graphics, right? Well, I mean, actually all, all aspects of it, but the one thing he didn't like, didn't want to touch was the physics. And I thought, oh, that sounds fascinating. Like the physics, like how to, to simulate physics, you know, it just seemed like naturally useful to, to you know, if a computer could simulate physics accurately, then you could use a computer to design 
um, things mechanically. Like um, my my idea was that um, I was going to go a computer to design the blades of a wind turbine or of the, the blades that they use um, in hydroelectric power plants, you know, by just simulating it and then just trying out different designs. And it just seemed like a much cheaper way of doing it than actually building these things. Um, so, yeah, I set out to try to understand how physics engines work. Mm, and, yeah, that sort of led me down this path where I ended up doing a master's degree in uh, essentially numerical analysis where I was looking at a particular technique for solving equations you know that that's what simulation really is about uh, you know you have a set of equations that that um, is sort of agreed upon that this is how this material behaves and then you've got to get a computer to solve it and there's like a big fascinating discussion about why you need a computer to do it in a certain way you know because most equations are non-linear and um, you know, I can go into why that, what that means, and you know, most you know, nonlinear equations, you can't, there's no what they call a um, closed solution. You can't just write out what the values of everything is going to be like throughout the space. Like you can't just say it. You, it, it, it's it's chaotic, right? There's every, you know, there's um, you know, and I've spent years thinking about that. Um, but um, anyway, so so yeah, so this is the first time I, 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 I really focused on a single software project, like continuously, eight hours a day, for 40 hours a week for an extended period of time. And this was for years. So I, for years, I was writing um, more and more uh, numerical software, which is just software that, you know, does calculations. And it was only later that I realized that, that, that this software was of a particular kind. And the, um, the thing that really distinguishes it from the software that I write now is that the software that I write now is, is you know, I like to think of it as like a living entity. It's, it is running all the time. It never stops running, right? So with the computer simulation, and with lots of software like that, you know, you you run you run it and it runs and then it stops and that's it. Right? You you it, it takes in a bunch of inputs, it does a bunch of calculations, and then it's done. Um, and it produces stuff like a graph. With the software that I'm writing now, um, it's interactive. So now I'm writing like web apps. So you have a, a, a piece of software that you're looking at and you're interacting with it um, and that interaction never stops. So you click, 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 interact, interact, interact. And it turns out that is a much harder problem, at least from, from what I've seen. It's much harder to write, to create something that has to exist um, you know, through time, like it, it, it's, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it, you're with, with, with the numerical software, you tweak it and then you rerun it and then it goes through and then you check, okay, is it doing what it's supposed to? With interactive software, like a web app, and this is a complicated web app, you know, it's like, it's a data visualization app that I, that I write for a newspaper and you you look at it and there's all kinds of things that you can do to change it and then so you know i mean so on the one hand what i'm what i was doing before was just me right it was just me um using it i mean that that's a big part of why things are more complicated now because now any random person can use it um and but but it's also that you know so so it's an interesting idea like why what makes that different and why is that more difficult R right you you know it it's it's um 
it's still just inputs and outputs. Mm, but the inputs, I mean, I, I guess, yeah. So yeah, I guess the way you could look at it is that the inputs are not constrained. Like with the numerical software, I can I can see the inputs and I run it. With the um, interactive software, I have no idea what the inputs are going to be. Mm. And not only that, I mean, I think the big difference is that with the numerical software, I can run it. And then I have the results of, of, of all the calculations to look at. I, I can see, you know, I can put all the debug messages in. I can write out what's happening through the code. But with interactive so software, I have no idea. Uh, I'm not able to do that. Right? I mean, the problems are similar because even with the the there's probably a good name for this like a single run run through software even with that i um you know the, the problem and i think that this is an interesting perspective to take on software like it's visibility right i, I can't see everything that's going on um you know, I can look at the code and I can understand it and I can, no matter how well I've designed it, you know, the, the, there's, there's lots of loops and points of flow and conditions and, you know, the, 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 the logic of it is so immense that, I, you know, I, I don't think that it, it, it's almost like it's very similar to the the lack of visibility that I have with a piece of interactive code that people are using and I have no idea how they're using it and I can't go in and see what they're doing. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think why I want to focus what my, my big idea, you know, let's call it the project X, you know, is, is two bits. It's, Cause and effect, and it's it's um, history, is what I'm labeling them now, and history is about what is history about? History history is about usage. History is about somehow recording or or capturing the effect, or somehow capturing the actual usage. Um, so. Yeah, but is that it? I mean, anyway, so, but anyway, but the point of this video is, again, it's supposed to be like, okay, this is the software I've written, and maybe this is, this is constraining my understanding of software and what it is, and my big grand ideas about what's going on are 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 really um, just a reflection of the, the 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 career that I've had or the software that I've written, and I'm really missing all this other stuff, right? People can come in and say, "Oh, you don't you don't work on embedded, or you you, you don't write mobile code, or um, you, you don't know you, you know you you don't, you've never written um, code for an operating system, right? You know, so yeah, so." Anyway, um, how long is this now? I have no idea. Help. So the, okay, so let's, let's go through it. So three phases, university, which is, is, is really numerical code, numerical analysis, sounds so fancy. Okay, then two is ERP, CRM was business software. And then three was this data, data data gathering and then interaction right for a newspaper so so it's like importers it's two things data importers and then uh, data interactive interactive so it's just like a graphical interface um, where you can select the data and then um, transform it 
uh, viewed in different ways using charts and um, ERP was more is yeah, like business business systems it was uh, like customers and products and products contracts and billing I did that for a while what was this this is like uh, just lots of maths maths is that it matrices matrix matrices um, what else I mean I also did like eventually I was like doing CUDA um, parallel coding on, on, on graphics cards. God, that was fun. Um, what else? Phases. Okay. So, so the business systems was, um, yeah, I mean, we, we actually worked for ISPs for some reason, just ISPs, uh, and went in and tried to clean up all their processes mm, also did workflows I actually did some really amazing really <laughs> amazing really good work or uh, work I'm very proud of, of uh, around workflows um, and uh, accounting um, and that's this this if 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 I my sense is that this was really just a, 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 everything was just a database the whole thing was just focused around databases right it was, it was literally just there wasn't that much logic um, outside the database no. um, yeah so it's really just database wrap it's a big database wrap um, and uh, you know, makes, make, ensuring consistency, ensuring data consistency was the main thing about it. Uh, you know, and the data it used the um, what's it called the domain-driven design. So the data and the language people used in the business were, were all like a one-to-one -one map. And and essentially that's what we were doing. We just wrote these front ends that let people capture it and. That was the basic idea. It, it was it was a pretty straightforward architecturally, very disciplined, um, and um, yeah, you know, it's so not you know. And then we got data gathering and interaction. This is um, for a newspaper. Um, what else? Yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about past projects, context, interact design phases. So, okay, so let's go back to the, the architecture and just see, you know, just, just discuss like what is it again? Okay, so it's the idea is um, cause, cause and effect plus. Um, history right so I'm trying to figure out what the what the I'm trying you know it's essentially what I'm trying to do at the moment is try to fix the problems that I'm having now right I work for this company and they you know, it, it, it's it's much more complicated now what I do than what I did before. Um, largely because I'm just doing it on my own. Before I was working in a big company uh, and I wasn't the architect of the software. And the, the, yeah, and right now, I, I don't know, it, it's, before the the main issue in terms of making sure the software works properly right because the in my first project i was at a university didn't matter if it was um you know it wasn't like business critical you know if my if my software was broke i you know i was the one using it and i would just fix it like oh it's not working uh, in my the second stint in the, in the company if something broke it was bad but 
it d there wasn't logic running um, that was running over and over again. Um, really, the only time things really broke is if the if something happened to the database. It was all really just about the database. So, so all we did was we just had a layer. Like every time you try to talk to the database, there was a layer that would say, okay, you're trying to do these changes to the database. And then they just said, no, you can't make that change. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. You know, this customer is not allowed this product. This billing item doesn't look right. You know, so, so that was the main job, just ensuring the consistency of the database and that anyone trying to access it, trying to, trying to write to it, um, didn't screw it up. I mean, that was, that was the job. And so it's a very, you know, so it's, it was a very satisfying because you just have to write the code on each write to the database and you just gotta make sure that it's working. So now, now the problem is just orders for me, just orders of magnitude more difficult because people are using this interactive chart software and, and not only that, but I have charts that are embedded into newspaper articles, right? Graphs that are embedded into newspaper articles and every time I change the code anywhere on my code base, I'm terrified that one of those charts are going to, suddenly all the charts are going to look wrong. Um, and, you know, I'm just, I, I spend so, I've spent so much time racking my brain around how can I fix this? How can I make sure that that's not going to occur? How, how, and, right? And, and, Fundamentally, what is causing this problem? Why is it that I am, you know, th that that is my primary focus around Project X, is just to to understand what causes programmer anxiety, you know, what what is the main issue uh, in my work in my field, um, and is it just me? Is it just this sort of software that that creates this? Why have I not, am I now in particular feeling anxious about this? Um, right, it, it, it's an interesting idea, and and I'm just trying to see it in a in a in a in a broad context, like right. What is what is what what creates this kind of anxiety and and what multiplies and what expands it? If and there there there's definitely ways to uh, think about this and to con and to understand it like the and and um, and to frame it. I um, fallout or is that the right word? There's a there's a great term for it. I think it's fallout. Then you know when you, when you make a change somewhere. Depending on, 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 on the architecture, you can tell, oh man, what is the word? You can tell like, oh, well, you know, the worst thing that can happen when I change this is this will happen, right? It's, it's not like a set of dominoes. If I change this, the blowout, the blowout is, is going to be very, you know, is, is not going to be huge. Um, and... That's what I want to understand. How do you control blowout? And in, in, under which circumstances is blowout huge? What kinds of software are there? And where do we sit? Where Where is our software sitting? And, you know, how do, how do you create confidence in software? How do you... Um, there, there, there's... The, obviously, the, you know, this is a, a long topic, but not framed like this. I don't see it framed like this very much. Um, and when it is framed like this, it's very, it's very dogmatic and it really um, makes me uncomfortable. You, when people say, oh, this is how you're supposed to do it. I, I, I really don't like that. Like, oh, no, it's got to be like this object oriented programming. I remember the whole field of object oriented programming. Every time anyone would talk about it, it felt like... 
I was being browbeaten by somebody who just knew the answer. I, 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 I really bristle at that. Um, why? Why is object? Why is this approach apparently the way? And and just to and to question it is somehow you know ridiculous. Um, no, no, that's that. There's there's. You know, I, it's it's and it's completely put me off object. I refuse to use classes in JavaScript just for this reason because it's like, oh, please. Um, I just don't want to be around that kind of attitude. It's not it's not there any longer. Thank God that 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 those people are now being <clears throat> have have gone out of fashion. But um, not those people, but you know that that style. But um, yeah, you know, so. Right, yeah. so these are the three phases of my serious software development and I want to understand this. I want to understand, um, what did I call it again, blowout? Um, I, I want to learn how to increase confidence or how that works. How does confidence work? Um, there was a, a great... Uh, framing of it by one of these um, functional programming guys, like a functional JavaScript. He wrote a th an article about fear. How the whole point is to reduce fear, and I think I think that's that's definitely um, uh, you know the, the the right sort of uh, direction to look at this. Um, you know, and I, and I don't want to say, oh, this is the way. I I, I I'm not trying to push the way I want to understand this problem um, and discuss it and, and to fi find languaging around it uh, and, and to and to and to bring in everything uh, by 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 looking at it from different angles and and so that's what I want to do and hopefully out of this develop like a library at least from my context you know it, for me it, right now i'm using writing javascript and i'm trying to deploy things online onto um uh you know functional on clouds and stuff and on servers but yeah but but hopefully just getting to a point where i just generically understand blowout i generically understand how one creates confidence and in what circumstances confidence goes down um, and how it goes up and and in a way that's sort of flexible and not not like dogmatic oh well you gotta write you know it has to be functional programming you've got to do it like this i mean it's like look you know i i, I appreciate that maybe this approach will solve this problem in these but, but what you don't seem to appreciate is that it's in a context, right? And, 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 it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's, it works for particular reasons, which you don't seem to be able to articulate. Um, you, you, I, I, it looks like you understand that, but in a vague way. And I want to make it clear. Uh, and I don't want to insult anybody uh, or fight with anyone. Um, but, but yeah, so this is, this is the main drive. I want to get there and I want to do it in a public way, you know. Okay, I think that's it, kids. Video number two. I'm really going to publish this. <laughs>